This video is inspired by Tier Zoo. Rainforests, the most popular biomes in the game, attracting upwards of 50% of the player base to call them home. And out of all the rainforests in the game, the Amazon rainforest is by far the largest of these servers. And it's no wonder to why that's the case. Combined with their higher loot drop potentials and rare seasonal challenges, many believe this is a noob-friendly environment to start in. But you have been fooled. In reality, the Amazon is the most competitive server in the game. With such a complex meta, the only the most optimized builds can truly dominate. From frogs living in trees, to packs of otters living in the waters, players have specced into all sorts of different play styles and strategies to remain viable. But as you might imagine, these players have all seen varying ranges of success. So today, we'll be doing an Amazon Animal tier list to see which builds rank the highest. And this is a pretty extensive list, so sit back, enjoy yourself, and tell me where your build ranks. But before we get into that, let's do a brief overview on the server. Alright class, the Amazon is split into 5 zones of play, allowing for immense diversity, as these zones essentially act as 5 different servers all meshed into one. So players have to build accordingly. For example, if you find yourself in a canopy, it might be best to invest your evolution points into the climbing ability, or if you're in the overstory, to invest into flight. This mechanic makes the Amazon the most diverse server in the game. So now, let's get into the tier list. Starting us off in the F tier, we have the tree frog, a frog that's thrown away its needs to live in the water and instead decided to live amongst the trees, swapping out its web feet for cling pads to give them remarkable climbing abilities for reduced swimming speeds. But there's a few problems with the tree frog and their playstyle. Because they basically spent all of their evolution points upgrading their mobility, all of their other stats suck. Leaving the only way for them to escape griefers is by using the frog's signature jump ability. But in the trees, this easily leads to fall damage, because if a player misses a skill check, to the ground they go. So F tier for the tree frog. The side neck turtle. As our name implies, they hide their neck on the side of their shells, rather than tucking into their shells like hidden neck turtles. They do this to spec into bigger shells or longer necks, with their longer necks helping them to snatch up XP more easily. However, I believe this is a pretty poor strategy, as their side neck placement keeps their vulnerable area more exposed increasing their odds of taking a critical hit in a 1v1. The side neck builds are a bit counterintuitive to the turtle playstyle, and makes them more vulnerable overall. So unless you want to be worrying about being crit in every matchup, don't play as a side neck. Now for our last member of the F tier, we have the Sloth, which many consider the worst mammal build in the entire game, specking the traits that make it more like a plant than a playable character. Other than stealth, their stats are all pretty low, but one stat in particular is near non-existent, their speed caused by their low XP food sources to make the Sloth the slowest playable animal build. And even while Sloth players are great climbers, with top speeds of about 0.17 miles per hour, they can't rely much on being able to get away if detected by predators. The Sloth is such a troll build that literally half of all Sloths die while using the bathroom. For some reason, they refuse to poop when they're in the trees, so once a week they climb down and spend hours using the bathroom, leaving them pretty vulnerable. Adding to this, for some reason, the Sloth mains decided to basically take all of their evolution points out of vision, making them totally blind in the daylight. Overall, the Sloth strategy is basically to annoy the tryhards by seeing how little they can do and still survive. Quite frankly, I have no idea how they do it, but I guess they're doing something right. Leaving the F tier, we are at D tier, where we find the Piranha. These fish have a reputation among the outside fanbase as ferocious predators who use team strategies to take down opponents far out of their weight class. But this is mostly a myth. Piranha schooling actually does very little to help with hunting. Like most small fish, piranhas mostly use their team strategies to increase awareness of threats from large predators. This strategy can be effective for some builds, but for builds like the piranha, who have no real defenses, it's pretty risky, and often means you're more likely to get noticed. I know what you're thinking. Jehona, what do you mean no good defenses? Just look at their teeth. So yes, while piranhas do have a strong bite for their size, and have actually one of the strongest among small vertebrates, this bite still doesn't do enough damage to game over large players. And even while they do occasionally eat builds like capybaras or humans, piranhas don't actually do the game ending damage themselves. Instead, they seek out these XP sources from already dead or dying players. Lastly, if you decide to play as a piranha, they don't have the cognitive capacity to form bonds with teammates. So you have to be careful, because the other piranhas in your squad might decide to start team killing if they're having difficulty finding other food. If you're looking for an aquatic predator build with a strong bite to rule the Amazon River meta, then I would suggest some of the higher ranked predators on our list. The next build in D tier is the Capybara. On the surface, the build looks pretty alright, 
specking as certain stats that have turned them into a sort of tank-like build over time. Featuring some of the highest HP stats of any rodent, as well as decent mobility and stealth stats, the Capybara is a god amongst rodents. But considering the server they inhabit, one of the most competitive in the game, the Capybara's attempt at joining the tank class is pretty awful. To me, it's like they've forgotten the whole point of being a rodent to begin with. Instead of specking in his stealth abilities, the Capybara has decided to make their large size their whole gimmick, spending their evolution points leveling it up in order to get more and more HP. But this build in its current state just doesn't work in a meta filled with all sorts of high tier predators, basically ensuring they could destroy it in almost every 1v1. And because their health stats aren't actually that impressive, compared to other tanks, they don't have enough HP to sustain any real damage. Combined with having no good defenses, their only choice is to hide, which is what rodents are designed to do anyways, and makes their whole large size gimmick useless. So when spotted by another player, to get away, what they'll try to do is hide in the water, where they can hold their breath for up to 5 minutes. Not bad, but just like the rest of their adaptations, this brings us to even more problems with their playstyle. Yeah, hiding in the water is a good defense against most aerial builds. Here in the Amazon, many predators are adapted to hunt in the water. Overall, while everyone enjoys a good capybara main, they're a very sad attempt at a tank build, and make them an easy source of XP for many. And this brings us to C tier. If you're looking to play a capybara, maybe you should display it as a tapir instead, as it essentially acts as the same build, except far better in just about every aspect, with HP and defense stats that put the capybara to shame, and make it one of the tankiest builds in the entire rainforest server. Additionally, the tapir also follows the strategy of the capybara, hiding in the water when escaping griefers, except they do it better, tapping into the snorkeling ability with their upgraded noses, giving them the chance to stay in the water for extended periods of time. But even still, while the tapir is tanky, it runs into the same problems as the capybara. They're just not quite tanky enough to withstand some matchups. But maybe if you're looking for a mid-range build that's totally aquatic, then you have the catfish, one of the largest fish classes in the entire Amazon River. By using their signature ability, the barbel, the catfish is able to navigate through even the muddiest waters. In addition, with its general feeding strategies and large size, it's no wonder as to why it's such a popular build path. However, the catfish does have some pretty bad matchups against some of the predators of the river, like the dolphins, sharks, and crocodiles, with their large size just making them an even bigger target. And because of these troubles, a catfish player's prospects are severely limited. The ocelot is the lowest ranked cat build on this list. Instead of specking in huge power or HP stats, the ocelot instead opted for increased mobility which is especially successful in the Amazon's many zones of play. These increased mobility stats make them excellent climbers, and give them the ability to navigate their arboreal zones with no movement penalties. Combined with this, they're also similarly strong swimmers. The Ocelot's adaptations make them the equivalent to a smaller variant of something like the Jaguar, but that's really all they are, a lower tier version of another build. And because of the fact they focus more on mobility rather than power, they have much tougher matchups than other feline builds. Because of this, the Ocelot is a solid mid-tier predator that falls short when going head-to-head -head with the top tiers. The last mid-tier build is the Armadillo, a build created by players that wanted to see what happens when you max your defense stats, doing this by covering their entire body with hardened armor. Their only real weak point are their bellies, an area that lacks his armor. However, they are able to counter this with their special ball ability, effectively covering this weak point. They also have decent mobility on land, in water, and underground. So while the armadillo is a solid build, because they inhabit the Amazon, many players have abilities that can crack through even the armadillo's high defense stats. Now we move up to the higher ranked builds. In the B tier, we have the puma, which is just a South American name for the cougar. The puma is an excellent predator in its respective servers, with the Amazon just being one of many that the player base has expanded to, making the puma the most successful generalist of any big cat in the Americas. Adding to this, when looking at the performance in the highly competitive Amazon server, the Puma, with its excellent power stats and good mobility, has been able to establish themselves as a dangerous force for many. However, the Puma gets absolutely bodied when in head-to-head -head matchups with other feline builds like Jaguar, and just isn't as well adapted to the Amazon's many different zones of play, making its general strategy a bit less efficient in this server compared to others. So while the Puma is a great generalist cat build, it's overshadowed by more dominant predator classes in the Amazon. The Heron build has spent most of its evolution points investing into its peck ability, giving it one of the strongest peck attacks and allowing them to easily pierce through the scaly armor of fish. This strategy pretty much boils down to the stork creeping silently over the water until an unsuspecting player comes by, where the stork utilizes their long neck as a damage multiplier for their beaks, finally impaling the fish and getting their XP, a strategy that works excellent when farming XP from smaller builds. But 
this same playstyle runs into some problems and is quite counterable. By dodging the Heron's peck attacks, it's very easy to exploit their long necks and their increased hitbox, with the most experienced players able to take full advantage of this. The Poison Dart Frog is known for its beautiful aesthetic choices and its extremely dangerous nature. As you might have guessed, the Poison Dart Frog hosts some of the most powerful poison abilities in the game, so strong that some classes of the frog can carry enough poison to kill two African bull elephants or even 20 humans. But the problem with this playstyle is that the poison only takes effect after the frog has been close enough to a predator to where they've probably already been eaten, so this poison mostly acts as a deterrent and doesn't actually make the build any tankier. Which is why the Poison Dart Frog sits at beats here. Funneling all of your evolution points into one overkill ability isn't the best strategy, and it might just be a better idea to spread out these points combined with a lower level toxic ability. The Spider Monkey, one of the most proficient climbers in the high canopies, specking into prehensile tails and long limbs to give them some of the best climbing stats in the entire game. But because the Spider Monkey has invested so much in its mobility, they lack in many areas. With low HP, power, and defense stats, the Spider Monkey's only option in most of their matchups is to just avoid them entirely. Overall, while their agility in the treetops keeps them safe most of the time, when it doesn't, game overs are a common occurrence, especially in a meta filled with so many predators. In high beats here, we have the Amazon River Dolphin. A number of dolphin builds have abandoned the ocean and now exclusively live in fresh water. And of these dolphins, the Amazon River Dolphin is the biggest, the most popular, and the highest ranking. Compared to the ocean's dolphins, the Amazon rivers are smaller and slower, but are also more maneuverable, so they can more easily navigate through the flooded forests or the river's many obstructions. They're also excellent navigators, as they've basically put the maximum amount of evolution points into their echolocation skill. These adaptations are perfect in the Amazon's aquatic zone, and completely offset their near total blindness. Overall, while they don't have any fatal flaws, they seem weaker in most ways than some other builds, and most notably is their size. They're actually pretty small, only being about 6 to 8 feet long. So, I'm giving them just above mid-tier rating. Now, moving to A tier. If you're looking for a build like the Amazon's Dolphins, but want a bit more power, then we have the Bull Shark, a build found all over the game, and is known as one of the most aggressive shark classes. While playable on many servers, this build is especially effective in the Amazon, where they're able to use their two unique abilities at their fullest potential. The first is their Bite Force, having upgraded it to the point that the Bull Shark has one of the strongest bite attacks in the meta, which is an extremely important trait to tap into, especially when hunting in murky coastal waters or in the rivers of the Amazon as this allows them to get a good grip on their prey before it has a chance to disappear out of view. However, what really makes the Bull Shark special, and even playable in the Amazon River itself, is their Urealinity trait, which allows them to alternate between freshwater and saltwater servers without penalty. So while other shark builds would face a possible game-ending debuff effect in freshwater, the Bull Shark is able to freely explore and loot these restricted areas, giving them access to the Amazon River with some especially curious types even going so far to make it 2,500 miles or 4,000 kilometers upstream. But maybe you're sick and tired of the old, boring bite attacks. In that case, we have the Electric Eel, who have a very unique build. They're one of the game's few members that have unlocked elemental attacks. Foregoing the popular choices of specking the fins and teeth, they've instead invested all of their evolution points into their signature move, Electric Discharge. This electric type attack is a short range AoE burst move that can be used both when hunting or when defending themselves from predators. And due to this attack type's rarity, no players really have any defenses to counter it, making it extremely effective, easily decimating entire parties of fish. However, for most large builds, this shock only does minimal damage, unless it crits and does a cardiac arrest, which is rare but possible. Combined with this, some electric eel players have started to team up, making their hunting efficiency even greater. Nevertheless, if this build wants to make it to the S tier, I would advise them to level up their shocks being a bit more effective against larger builds. The Giant Anteater, a build with the most proficient anti-bug adaptations in the game. With their two foot long tongues and strong digging arms, they're the perfect counter to OP builds like the Ant. At first glance, the Anteater seems like it would rank lower on the list. With no noticeable defensive traits and a kit totally adapted to eating bugs, how on earth could they protect themselves in such a competitive environment like the Amazon? Well, in that case, the Anteater has unlocked some specific adaptations that make them much stronger than they might look, as they've upgraded their health stats, allowing them to tank some pretty powerful hits. But this alone can't keep the Anteater safe, so in the case where they can't escape and need to fight off an attacker, their strong digging arms are armed with a giant set of claws that are the same size as the Grizzlies, yet even sharper, giving them an extremely powerful slash ability when in a head-to-head -head matchup. The Anaconda has specced into certain adaptations like their tough scales and giant size to make them the tankiest snake in any server. Taking full advantage of this tankiness, 
The anaconda hasn't specked into venom like many other snake builds. Instead, they take down their prey using the constriction ability, an ability so powerful they can even win 1v1s against the tiger's or crocodilian mains. However, their large size has made the anaconda relatively slow on land, leaving them extremely vulnerable if they find themselves stuck there, and in turn are very reliant on the water to move and hunt safely. While yes, this slow land speed is a weakness in theory when taking into consideration that they live in the Amazon server, which is one of the most aquatically integrated servers in the entire game, the Anaconda, with their fast swimming speeds and their stealth benefits that come from living in the murky Amazonian waters, then their slow land speed just really isn't a factor, as they could just use the water to travel and ambush prey without being noticed with relative ease. But their playstyle does have some weaknesses. For one, their grappling playstyle does leave them vulnerable to pack hunting, or if they fail to take down their target, the energy costs of the constriction ability are immense, and leaves them very vulnerable to counterattack. We've been stuck on the land or in the water for most of this tier list, so why don't we take it to the sky? With our final member of the A tier, we have the Parrot, which is one of the smartest builds in the entire game. With intelligence stats on par with that of the Elephant or Dolphin classes, allowing them to use these stats to solve complex problems and to communicate with their team members about potential danger in the area. Additionally, the Parrot has an exceptionally strong bite attack. Though it's not as good in PvP, it can still break bones if the Parrot is able to land a good attack. But mostly, this beak is used to open up the tough shells of nuts, allowing them to unlock valuable and hard to obtain loot. On top of that, they spec into the Intimidation tree line in order to avoid fights in the first place. They've done this by adding bright colors to their build in their customization menu, a secret trick of the game that ups your base Intimidation level and makes attempts more successful. Overall, the Parrot is able to defend themselves from most other aerial builds, and because they live in the treetops, they don't really have to compete with land carnivores, because they can always just fly away, making them a solid A tier build in the Amazon. However, their intimidation strategy has little to no effect on some of the high tier aerial builds, and their intelligence stats can't always save them from these unwinnable matchups. Now, moving on to the S tier. These builds are the ones that you want to play as in the Amazon. First, we have the Cane Toad. This build is essentially a base toad with upgraded stats all across the board. By putting evolution points into leveling up their skin, to turn it into a sort of leather-like shield. They've boosted both their physical defenses and their resistance to elements. Because of this, they're able to win 1v1s with just about every smaller build, by just being a damage sponge for most of their attacks. But this strategy doesn't really stand a chance against any mid-sized carnivores with more powerful bite or slash abilities. In these matchups, they decided to employ a different tactic. By spending some evolution points into the Toxin skill tree, They've unlocked the ability to secrete toxins from special glands on their body, giving them a poison powerful enough to kill predators like dogs or cats just by picking it up and putting them in their mouth. The overkill poison ability of the poison dart frog needs to take some notes here. This toxicity and their tough skin gives them great matchups against most of the builds in the Amazon, combined with their rapid reproductive rate and general feeding habits to make the cane toad a dominant force in the Amazon and it's not worth it for any predators to really go out of their way to kill the cane toad. And this strategy has proven quite effective, as the cane toad has taken these OP stats and decided to go to other servers and dominate those regions as well, with some players calling the cane toad the worst invasive species in the entire game. If your main lives in the overstory, the harpy eagle is always on your mind. These guys have modified the core eagle build setup by adding two new abilities, jungle wing and harpy claw. The first of these abilities, Jungle Wing, comes from the Harpy Eagle shrinking their wing size. While decreasing their soaring ability, it allows for hugely increased agility, an extremely important perk to have as it allows them to navigate quickly through even the thickest parts of the jungle brush. The second of these abilities, the Harpy Claw, a nearly maxed out claw, stronger and far larger than any other raptor build, allowing them to one-shot players like monkeys or the sloth with ease. These upgrades make the Harpy Eagle the king of the sky in the Amazon, with no natural predators and their total and utter domination in the sky, the Harpy Eagle is easily S tier. The Giant Otter takes its place as the largest currently playable otter species, but other than this impressive size, they also boast some remarkable intelligence, having tapped into intelligence stats that grant them the advantage of engaging in team-based gameplay, forming family groups where otters queue up together for hunts or to safeguard their territory. These team strategies prove highly effective enabling them to navigate challenging 1v1 matchups and even reverse their outcomes, allowing some otter groups to excel in griefing low-tier caimans and even scare away jaguar mains. Additionally, they spec into aquatic traits, such as a streamlined body and web feet, enhancing their agility in the water, with some players even having referred to them as the river jaguar due to their ferocity and strength. Overall, the giant otter combines high strength and intelligence stats with superior aquatic maneuverability and teamplay to secure its position 
in the S tier. While other Caymans would probably rank somewhere around the A tier, there's one version of this build that ranks far higher. This is the Black Cayman, the largest and most dangerous of any other Cayman species in the Amazon. Armed with an extremely powerful and lethal set of jaws, the Black Cayman has no trouble one-shotting any player it can get its mouth on. Adding to this, their stealth stats are also extremely high, using their environment to their advantage. Due to specking into the black coloration, they can hide in the muddy Amazon waters without being noticed, making the Black Cayman the perfect ambush predator near the water's edge. Overall, while other Caymans have to worry about Jaguars, the high rank Black Cayman players have no worries. Their gigantic size, stealth, and powerful jaws make them untargetable for anyone but the craziest of players. The menace of the Amazon server, the Jaguar. The Jaguar is basically a Puma who maxed out their power stats with the mobility of an ocelot. They're true masters of their environment and the most meta-defining build in the entire server. Jaguars have the highest DPS of any cat, with bites double the power of that of a tiger. Combined with their teeth, specifically designed to penetrate the armors of the strongest builds, sorry armadillos, it's clear as to why the Jaguar is such a dominant predator. Jaguars are top tier, and everyone knows it. They're what every build aspires to be, and that's why they're the king of the Amazon. So here's a final look at our tier lists. I hope you enjoyed. If I had any information wrong, let me know down below. We're all here to learn. And also, I want to thank Tier Zoo for inspiring the creation of this video, as well as my subscribers that voted in this poll. From here on out, we're going to do one video a week, so we're going to get back onto the regular schedule. But anyways, thanks for watching, and Jehona out.